So hello everyone, it's lovely to have you here for time and energy management secrets for busy professionals. This is, um, I love talking about this topic and I remember one of the first times I delivered it for, for my firm at Gunner Cook a few years ago, um, one of the best bits of feedback I got was from one lawyer who said in 43 years I've never had any training on how to manage my time and energy. So um, I was really pleased with that and I think it's something that um, although you may have heard um, some of these tips before in other trainings, um, there's one or two things you might not have heard about yet, or if you have, it's just a really good reminder. Um, I'm a big fan of the, the Stephen Covey, um, Seven Habits of, of Effective People, um, and one of the quotes from there is that to know and not to do is not really to know. So most of what I talk to people about is generally common sense and you can find it on YouTube or in a book or whatever. But if we're not putting it into practice, then we don't really know about it. So it's just nice to have a reminder sometimes, I think. So what my first um, secret, if you like, to share with you is that it's not actually about time. Managing our time isn't about managing our time. It's about managing our energy, our energy levels. Um, and I just want today to be a chance for you to start having a think about your energy levels. Um, and, and maybe over the, ne the next week or so, sometimes we need to do it over a month, but certainly over a week, I want you to start noticing your energy levels. And, and so you can work with them better, you can work with them more effectively, and actually that will help you to be more productive, more effective, and get more done. Um, so in today's little tiny training, I want to talk to you about two secrets or two ideas perhaps. Um, and the first one is about how we can use our time more effectively and get more of the right things done. Um, and I just wanted to explain this a little bit more, particularly in the context of, of COVID and, and, and the situation that we found ourselves in for the last, what, 15, 16 months or so now, um, is that we're all in a pretty... Um, stressed out environment. We've all got pretty high levels of stress running under the surface. We've also got exhaustion. We've got uncertainty. We've got all those sorts of things. So in, 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 any, in every way, most people are struggling in one form or, an, or another. They're not operating at their best. Let's put it that way. And when we're in any form of stress or overwhelm or exhaustion, what tends to happen with us is we go into a sort of tunnel vision um, I, I talk sometimes in my trainings about trying to be a superhero and many professionals, you know, we have this, I can be everything to everyone. I can say yes to everything. I can manage everything. I can juggle all the plates. I can be this superhero. Um, whether we call ourselves that or not, that is in effect what we're trying to be. And this sort of superhero idea is very tunneled visioned. It's very, I must get this project done. I must get this next job done. I must get this completion done, wh whatever it is for you. Um, and when we're in that stressed tunnel vision, we can um, we sort of forget that there's other things going on outside it. We forget to see the bigger picture. In fact, we forget the bigger picture because we're so focused on what's right in front of us. And as I say, that can be a very stress reaction. It, it, it's the adrenaline reaction that we do have before a deadline, you know, whether it's a court deadline or a completion, whatever it is, if we've got a deadline, we have that rush of adrenaline to get us through. Um, but unfortunately, when we're in this sort of higher stressed state that very many of us are, I mean, I'd, I'd go so far as to say all of us are. Um, we're not just using that adrenaline just to get through that deadline. We're sort of living in that state all the time. So whereas tunnel vision can be very good just for that day to get that report done or to get that completion done or whatever it is, we, we don't want to stay in that all the time because just staring at what's right in front of us um, does increase our stress levels and doesn't help us to move th through things. Um, so that's what this, this first tip is going to help us with a little bit. Um, the second tip is about how can we get more results, so get more done, but with less effort, because as I say, we're all exhausted, we're all trying to fit even more into our lives, I think, than we did before. Um, and I know uh, maybe maybe with, with some of you, I've had this discussion before, which is, you know, 
working from home has been an aspiration for people for a long time and the technology we've had is fantastic zoom is fantastic teams is great but what it has enabled us to do is to fit more into our day so where if we'd had a physical meeting we'd have had to walk to that meeting or travel to that meeting we'd have had some waiting time outside while everybody gets ready then we'd have had our meeting and then travel back etc now you know fantastic as it is we can go from a 10 30 meeting straight into an 11 o'clock meeting straight into an 11 30 meeting we can just go straight from one to the other um, and we're not having that break that we would have had we are actually fitting in more into our day and I know something I've only just recently come to have a look at is am I trying to fit too much in now have I gone too far the other way so that every half an hour or hour is booked with something and do I need to actually create some space in my day now so we, we might have a little chat about that as well um, so this is for you if you'd like some strategies perhaps for planning your day, um, certainly for prioritising, because as I say, when we get stuck in this stress, overwhelm, tunnel vision, a sense of prioritisation sort of goes out the window. This sort of superhero status thinks that everything is as important as the other. So yes, to, to a logical, if we took a step back, we might say, well, that court deadline or that completion deadline is is you know that can't move that that is a fixed deadline and and but suddenly we seem to think everything else is like that you know maybe we decided we were going to buy a birthday card that day or order something from amazon or get the shop ordered online and suddenly in that stress state they all become as important as each other i don't know if that makes sense but we can't effectively prioritize when we're in a stressed state everything is important and everything is urgent and that obviously doesn't help us in terms of of re prioritization in terms of what is actually important so hopefully today's session is going to help with that um, we're going to talk about energy and how we can manage our energy better and as I say today is just the starting point for you because our energy levels are very personal to each of us um, they also change whether we're men and women as well um, so today I just want to give you some pointers so that you can have a look at this throughout the coming week maybe the coming month for you um, which all in all, what's this for? Yes, it is to help us feel more productive, feel that we can actually get through more. But really, really what it's important for for me is how can we feel better with what we're doing, not feel overwhelmed, not feel that we're current, current, constantly chasing our tail um, and that we're constantly behind, but that feel that we're more in control of everything that we have to do. Um, so uh, I think I know most of you, but for anybody who's new to me, I'm a commercial property partner. Um, I've been self-employed for um, over nine years now. Um, so I also know what it's like to be to be running a business. Um, I actually have three businesses now. So I have my legal business. I founded Authentically Speaking five years ago, which is training coaching business for, um, for professionals. Um, I have three boys who are 11, seven and three. So that obviously comes with its own um, exhaustions and pressure. Um, I love writing, so I'm co-author of Future Proof Your Legal Career, which is being published um, in the summer this year, which is great. Um, and I'm also writing my own book, The Authentic Lawyer, um, which should be out very soon, I hope. Um, so that's me in a nutshell. So let's have a look at some of these secrets. So how can we use our time more effectively? So as I say, this is about trying to identify what's truly important instead of in this sort of stressed superhero state, we think everything is equally important and we're trying to juggle everything. Um, so the problem, I think, can be with traditional to-do lists. Now, I know some I work with some clients who love a to-do list um, to the point that sometimes they can become overly reliant on them and I have one client who, who said that you know she'll do her first to-do list and then she'll do a sort of um what's very important from that list onto another list and then she'll have a third list that sort of filters it down even more and when we looked at it we looked at how long each morning she was spending just working on these lists so what we have to do with to-do lists is, is have a look and be honest with ourselves about whether they're really helping us in which case great you know any tools that genuinely help us let's use them or whether we're using them either as a crutch or in this client's case as a form of procrastination so it was stopping her from actually starting her work because she was constantly 
writing these lists. So we do just have to be careful to make sure that they are being useful for us. The other reason I'm not a huge fan of them is that we can feel like a failure if we don't get through all the tasks. You know, I know a lot of people that have that lovely sense of satisfaction every time they can tick through something. Um, but conversely, if we get to the end of the day and there's still things on there that we haven't done, then that's just an excuse for us to beat ourselves up. And then they go on to the next day's list. And if they're still there the next evening, we're beating ourselves up again. So this is where I hope that today's session will show you how you can prioritize because some of those things on that list, they might be on there and don't need to be. And it's this sort of tunnel vision, superhero, I can do everything that is keeping them on the list um, when actually we could, we could just get rid of them. Um, and as I say, I've talked about this already, that when we're in this state, we're not able to see what the bigger picture is, exactly what is it that we're trying to achieve here, instead of trying to be all things to all people, what is the, the actual thing that we're working on that we're trying to achieve, you know, whether that's, um, you know, income for our family, able to pay the mortgage, saving up for something, whatever it is, what is it that we're actually trying to achieve here, Um and as I say, the whole point of, of this particular tip is to help us to stop feeling busy and behind before we've even started. Because, you know, there's so much research out there and I'm a big believer that how we start the day is how our day is going to go. And so what I hate for people is that they start the day faced with this to-do list and they feel as though they're out of control, overwhelmed and behind before they even get into anything. How can we actually start our day feeling in control, even if things go awry in the day, which they will, but how can we at least start it feeling that everything is under our control, which will help us to manage those curveballs a bit better? So what can we do? Um, so the idea with this um, particular tool that I'm going to mention to you is that we literally dump out everything that's going on in our head because we've got all this overwhelm, stress response, everything running around in our head. And we think it's all equally important. You know, we think ordering that Tesco shop is just as important as that completion that has to go through today or that court deadline. And let's be honest, they're not. You know, that court deadline has to happen. Those things that are fixed have to happen. The, the Tesco shop, we could order today, we could order tomorrow, we can deal with that in a different way. You know, so this, this exercise helps us to really focus on what's important and what's not. So what this exercise is, is, is it's a form of journaling, a form of writing in effect, but it's very, very simple. You literally get some paper, um, you know, ideally some A4 paper, and just dump down everything that's going on in your head so you don't need to overthink this you're not trying to write a nice piece of writing it's not a to-do list in the traditional sense everything that's going on in your head goes straight down on the paper it's called um continuous uh, continuous stream of thought or something like that um it's literally whatever's going on in your head goes down on the paper so it might be um it's really cold today or i really need a coffee today or i don't know why hannah's asked me to do this exercise whatever's in the head goes down on the paper and you just keep writing now ideally you want to go to about three pages of a4 it should take you if you write fairly fast about 10 minutes or so um now with mine because i have our rsi too many years of, of mouse use um it, it's scribble you can only read the first line or two the rest of it is scribble but it still has the same effect so it doesn't need to be um you know nicely written you don't use grammar or punctuation you don't check it this isn't an editing exercise where you go back and say well that's not really what i meant this is literally emptying Think of it, you know, literally taking the rubbish out and, and dumping it. So whatever's going on in your head, write it down on that paper and keep writing. Even if it's, oh, well, now I can't think of anything. Then whatever your head is saying to you, you write that down and eventually it will move on to the next thing. Now, this is an exercise that um, I can tell you what to do. But until you actually try it, you won't see the power of it. But what, what it helps you do is it helps you work through all that mind chatter, everything that's going on in your head, everything that you think is important. It's helping you to sort all that and to dump it down on the paper. And then you can you can throw away the paper, you can shred the paper, you can burn it, do whatever you want to do with it. It's not anything that's useful to keep. This is not useful for you. The useful part is the dumping out get rid of it after that. But what you will find it does um, is that it does help to prioritise because once your brain's gone through all that chatter, all that clutter, it starts to sort into what's really important for that day. 
Um, so actually the days I, so I don't do this every day and I don't recommend people do do it every day, maybe about three times a week at the, the most ideally, but the days you want to use it are the days when you really feel there's a lot on the days when you might look at your calendar or just think, actually, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to get through all this today. That's the sort of day that you want to use this exercise because at least it clears out the mind chatter. It's not following you around all day, which takes up your energy to have that thought of, have I paid that bill yet? Deal with the thought and push it away. All takes your energy, which you, you don't want on a day when you've got a lot to get through. You need to conserve your energy for what you've got to get through. So this will help you sort through that. So I would just encourage you to give it a go. If it's something that you think might be useful for you, just, just have a go and try it out helps you focus your mind on what's important for that day and certainly helps you to prioritize what needs to be done and the rest you can let go. Um, so number two, I wanted to talk to you about how do we get more results with less trying, less sort of physical effort, if you like. Um, so the big issue we've had, and you know, I've been giving this training for years, even before COVID, but this problem is compounded right now, that we are into, we're too in demand, you know, with emails, phones, the internet, the being connected, being on all the time, um, and this idea of multitasking, you know, that we've lived with for years, was it a good thing to multitask? Now we're realizing actually multitasking doesn't exist and no, it's not a good thing. Um, but we're not able to focus on one task properly. Multi, all multitasking is, is moving very quickly from one thing to another. It is not possible to actually have our attention on everything in one go. We're just moving quickly through a lot of things, but not focusing properly on any. Again, using up valuable energy when we're doing that. So what we want to do is stop spreading our attention. We want to focus on one task, get that finished, and then move on to the next task. Get that finished and move on to the next one. Now, caveat here. That's not all. What I'm going to talk about now isn't possible all day long, every day, not in the sort of work that we do and the sort of lives we lead. But the idea is how can we bring in more of this and less of the chopping from one thing to another very, very quickly? Um, so the solution is. I, I love this, but it just takes a little couple of minutes to explain. What we're talking about here is different tasks use different sorts of energy. So um, drafting uses one form of energy. Um, having a difficult conversation with the client about a fee takes another sort of energy. Negotiating a document with the other side takes a different sort of energy. Just reading through our emails, just catching up, getting up to speed takes another sort of energy again. Being with our friends, being with our family, um, you know, meditating, writing, reading, they're all different sorts of energy that we're using. So the idea is how can we put certain, um, um, just to, to, before I move on to that, every time we switch from one sort of energy to another, it takes around 10 to 15 minutes, different for different people, to refocus again. So if you're in the middle of some drafting work and then you suddenly take a phone call from a client giving you some instructions on a matter, then when you go back to that drafting, not only have you got to find where you were, pick up your thought train again, it takes you about 10 or 15 minutes to switch the energy from talking to the client back into creative drafting mode. Um, so what we want to do is not lose all those 10 to 15 to 20 minutes that we're doing every day, probably multiple times a day because we keep switching energies. So the idea is how can we put things that are similar together in a batch and do them all at the same time then move on to something else so maybe and you will all the books about effectiveness and time management will all talk about people who only check their emails at certain points in the day now obviously everyone has to do what they need to do for, for their work but I would encourage you to um, you know think outside the box with this not just accept this idea that well I must be on my emails all the time well, ask yourself, is that true? Because if you were in a meeting with a client, you know, whether that's Zoom or in person, you would not be on your emails for that hour because that would be rude and disrespectful to that client. So to say, I am going to spend an hour where I am not connected to my emails because I'm drafting or because I'm reviewing documents or whatever it is, you know, so to do be honest with yourself, if you catch yourself saying, well, I couldn't possibly then there's something there to have a look at. So could we could we think about what um, tasks we do? And we can pick this up in, in the Q&A at the end um, if that's useful. What tasks do you do throughout the day and what what is similar? 
that you could put together. So returning phone calls to people to update them, maybe you put all that together. Um, as I say, drafting, reviewing, those sorts of things, all the same sorts of energy. What's very interesting and came up when I was, um, because I've been doing book writing for the last year or two, is that writing, so drafting and editing are two different energies. And I found this very much myself in the book writing process. So um, where you're sort of drafting something down and then we're constantly going back to, to check it and to edit it, we're switching energies all the time doing that, which means it takes a lot longer. So if you're in the middle of a piece of drafting, for example, do all the drafting, get all that down and then go back and do the editing because you might find that you get through it a lot quicker that way instead of constantly shifting from creative drafting energy to editing logical ed energy, if that makes sense. So that's the idea with this one, batching tasks together. Now, another step further with this is to realize that actually we have different energies throughout the day. We have different energy levels and different energies for different activities. Now this is different for every person. So we will have different energies throughout the day and different energies throughout the week. And the way to explain this is that, for example, I'm an early morning person. I love getting up at six o'clock in the morning and I will, you know, that's when I'm most creative. That's when I want to catch up with all my work and get ahead for the day. Um, you know, whereas I know some people are evening people, you know, they are five, six, seven o'clock people. They, they come alive and that's when they want to do their work. So know your energy and work with it. And then similarly, um, during the week, again, I'm a Monday, Tuesday, highest energy person. That's when I've got my most energy for things. Whereas my husband is terrible on a Monday. He avoids putting any meetings in or anything like that because his energy moves up through the week. So by Thursday, Friday, he's got highest energy. So get to know yourself, you know, and, and the best way to do this is to keep a little note, you know, so throughout the day, a few times, you know, maybe it's three or four points in the day. Just think, how are my energy levels on a scale of one to 10 and just note them down. And then maybe over a week, over a month, you'll be able to tell the patterns for yourself. Now you can't always plan your work according to your energies. That's not always going to be possible. But, you know, I would hazard a guess that 50, 60, 70 percent of the time you could probably plan your meetings and what you're going to spend your time on during the day and during the week based on when you've got the best energy for it. Um, so bundle your similar tasks together as much as you can, the ones that are similar types of energy and choose the best times of the day and the best times of the week for you as far as possible for, for those different tasks. Now, just a couple of other points to throw in here, because we are talking about trying to be focused and sticking to one task at a time, limit your distractions. So can you turn off your emails, turn off your phone? You know, what, what I'm a big fan of doing is turning off the internet. If I'm working on something that I don't need internet access for, just shut the internet off so that you can't have emails coming in and out. You can't necessarily have calls and Teams calls and that sort of thing arriving so that you can just focus on what you're doing. So limit all the distractions, just get on with that one task and then move on to the next thing. Um, before switching from one task to another, um, and again, just to throw this in here, there's a lot of research that we can only focus for about 45 to 90 minutes at a time. And again, this varies between person and between what activity you're doing. Our true focus only lasts for about 45 minutes to 90 minutes. So you do want to be making sure you're building in a small break. Now, a break doesn't have to be a 10, 15 minute break every time. It could literally be a few deep breaths. It could be sitting back, having a stretch, taking a few deep breaths. It could be getting a glass of water. It could just be walking to the window and having a look outside for a second or two to, to you know, re, readjust, refocus, if you like. Have what we what I call a bridging ritual between different tasks. And that bridging ritual could be making a cup of coffee, could be stepping outside. It could literally be having a stretch and taking a few deep breaths. It's just something to signal to your mind and your body that you're changing from one um, task to another. 
so having a bridging ritual but also really important especially now and you'll have heard a lot about this over the last year have a ritual between your home time and your work time we used to have one built in automatically the good old commute you know you'd have that time whether it was a walk a cycle a tube ride a train ride a car ride we had a natural break between our work mode and our home mode but when we're just in the home office or sitting at the dining table we're just getting up and straight into home mode and that is massively increasing our stress levels and as one of my clients has said what he was finding is his children or his partner were talking to him and he wasn't taking it in because he was still mentally on that phone call with that client or in that court hearing he wasn't listening to what they were saying because he was still in work mode um so create some sort of ritual a lot of people like the artificial commute they're just going for a walk to the end of the road and back it doesn't have to take as long as that again this is about if you like tricking our mind and our body that we've switched from one thing to the other so it could just be making a different flavored cup of tea from what you've had all day it could be um walking around your garden if you've got one or whatever it is you know be creative it might be a piece of music you know, I'm a big fan of playing a piece of music before I start in the morning. Those people who know me know it's The Greatest Showman. I'll play that, you know, four or five minutes of a song before I start in the morning if I feel I need a bit of energy. Maybe you have a song that starts you in the morning and a song that you finish in the evening. Be creative with this. It's really up to you. But it's a signal. That's all it is. It's a signal from your mind and your body that you finish work mode and you've gone into home mode. Again, it will help reduce the stress levels and helps us to um, have this separation between work and home that will help us to sleep better and, and deal with stress better and all of those things as well. Um, so just to throw in at the end there, what I always say to people is with all of this and the reason I train all of this is how can we look after ourselves better? Because ultimately that's how we'll be more effective, more productive and be, be happier is that we just take that time to be kind to ourselves. But it's not just because it's a nice to have. What I've learned over the years is that being kind to ourselves and looking after ourselves makes us more successful because that way we can do more we can get more done we're focusing on the right things we've got the right energy that we're bringing to it so that we can get it done quicker and more effectively and you know we're better with other people whether it's our clients our colleagues whether it's with our family members um so it just it's a win-win all round when we just start to be um to be kind to ourselves um so let me just hope that was useful for everybody. I'm going to stop sharing and stop recording and we'll come and ha have any questions.